Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Vidaray Military Market Webinar. My name is Mark Fleming. I'm the Vidaray Military Market Business Development Manager. I'll be your host for the next 40 minutes or so. A little bit about me. I retired from the U.S. Navy as a Chief Warrant Officer 5. After more than 30 years of naval service, I earned a Master Explosive Ordnance Disposal Technician qualification. I was commissioned as an EOD officer. I served as a materiel and a requirements officer to group staffs. I earned multiple personal decorations and service medals and campaign awards. And now, as a business development manager for VidAray, I'm responsible for developing and improving VidAray's extensive network of underwater solutions, especially for military and government use. Oh, if you don't, I want you to take a minute and grab a pen and paper to uh, so take notes during the webinar. Also, please ask questions. You should have a toolbar on your screen, and at the end of the webinar, I'll read all questions. Uh, at any time during the webinar, just type your question and send it in the text box, and I'll have it in the queue, and I'll get to it at the end. Okay? I'm going to attempt to show a video here. Um, while we wait for a few more late strag stragglers. Uh, I understand it may lock up and appear jerky to those of you with poor connections overseas or low bandwidth. Uh, what you should be seeing is a picture-in-picture -picture of a video array Pro 4 standing off five feet away from about a third pound of C4 explosives withstanding over 2,000 psi of overpressure. This not only displays the robust architecture of the video array Pro 4, but it also gives you some profound thoughts on remote access or render safe possibilities using a small explosive device and standoff using your existing tools. And, and keep in mind, using an ROV, that is a remote procedure. It's a remotely operated vehicle. Ooh, Olympic. Okay, make sure you're in the right brief. If this is the Olympic you're looking for, you're in the wrong brief. Uh, the origin of the term Olympic. Limpet is a common name most often applied to it for a taxonomic group of sea snails and marine mollusks. For our use, it's an underwater explosive charge uh, with a time delay or remote operated detonator attached to the hull of the ship, submarine, pier, pipeline, or an offshore drilling platform. The name limpet is similar to the sea the mollusk or the sea snail where it attaches to the sides. Usually attached by divers, limpets are placed at specific points of a target frequently in clusters. After arming, the mines detonate at a set time or a given signal. Ooh. Limpets come from many countries of origin, and they vary greatly in the shape, size, and firing methods. For example, they come in timed, electric, mechanical, chemical delay. They could be acoustic, or pretty much any other method you can imagine. There's some, some different limpets you can see from different countries. Limpets are commonly placed by a diver or a dive pair or even multiple sets of dive pairs transported by swimmer delivery vehicles, SDVs. Other, com other common terms associated to limpets are AR for anti-removal, in other words, a booby trap. If you take it off, it'll detonate. Uh, safe and arming, it's a, that's like a, a safe switch to make it safe so it doesn't detonate while the divers are delivering it. Uh, DFD, demolition firing device, that's basically what, you know, what makes it go boom. The term parasitic device, parasites, uh, comes from the word parasite, which is an organism that lives on a ho host or another species. Uh, the host is the transport vessel in our case, or the ship or the sub. So parasitic device is a container attached to a hull of a ship for smuggling contraband into ports and harbors, sometimes even without the knowledge of the crew, mainly for drug trafficking, but they can be used for cash, arms, and weapons, or even chemical or biological or nuclear materials. Parasitic devices also come in all shapes and sizes and materials. They can be custom built or welded, old converted fire extinguishers or scuba tanks, or as simple as a, as a PVC pipe. They can be attached to pad eyes, zinc suctions, discharges, rudders, or simply shoved into an old inoperable bow thruster or discharge crate. In addition to an external container, a parasitic device can also be a modified suction or discharge as well as complete comfort them over an existing area of a ship. <sighs> a 
Submarines, oil platforms, piers, underwater pipelines, ships are all possible targets to limpets. For today's brief, we're going to talk about ship hulls in the search discussion because it's not only a possible limpet target, but it's also a common target of parasitic devices. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to break it down into phases. These are some common generic phases in response to a ship hull search for limpets. Many of these are also applicable to parasitic device searches. Specifically, to ROVs are recommended actions. In other words, for limpets, uh, in addition to the usual, hey, flood the spaces, evacuate unessential personnel, and begin your tag out, you add ROVs to search, it with, search and locate items. In other words, when you get there, the items can be found by the crew or somebody on station with an ROV. I mean, after all, who knows the ship and the pier better than the crew or the captain or the engineering officer? In the case of parasitic devices, this is a showstopper, <laughs> would it be unreasonable to make ships conduct their own sweeps prior to port entry and self-report any suspect items prior to entering port? On arrival, begin the ROV search prior to the tagout completions. In other words, as soon as you show up, you can splash in the water and begin the search of the water line, the pier, and all the areas that would be a hazard to you. Uh, nested ships, no problem. I mean, you don't have to... <laughs> It's usually a long delay, especially in the limpet or putting divers in the water, because you're going to tag out all the ships that are side by side before you splash the divers. The ROV can basically put it right in the water and begin searching immediately without any waste of time. In the search phase, an ROV with a camera and sonar, they can conduct a sweep very quickly on the hull and complex areas. The ROV's tether can guide divers rapidly to suspect items and also give them a visual item even prior to entering the water. This greatly reduces time on target. Also, during the search of a parasitic device, it's usually limited to a single ship at a time, one at a time at a port of entry. In the case of a limpet attack, this could mean multiple ships, all of them on the pier or even an entire harbor. It would be in for a long night. So to have something that can do it rapidly clear ships, that's a great tool to have. Um, the next one, a lot of you may be scratching your head, recovery and tow. Why would that be of interest to you? Well, if you've ever conducted a remote pull on a suspect item, only at the end of the pull to have the, an empty rope or you lost it. An ROV can rapidly research the ship hull or the entire path of where you did the pull to reacquire the item without putting divers in harm's way and adding time on target. And also exploitation or disposition of the item. You can capture video, you can get photographs during the initial search for both positive identification. You can check that safe and arming, the SNA of the condition. Safe and arming, many times what happens, especially in limpets, divers in a rush. Hey, it's noisy, it's scary, they'll forget to arm it. So that drastically reduces your urgency and you can continue with the search if you can look at it and make positive verification if it's armed or not. Also, if you do a render safe or an RSP, you can go come back in and verify it. You can actually watch the RSP. And the documentation of evidence for trial. I mean, law, that's, that's very important. I mean, that chain of custody, to have the evidence to be able to, you know, to, to take them to trial, it's huge. Uh, and uh, before I move on to the next slide, I'm going to ask you some questions to ponder while we continue the brief. First of all, uh, this can make you grimace. I hope you're sitting down. But could a parasitic device have explosives in it? How could you distinguish an underwater IED from a parasitic device? Could parasitic devices be rigged for evidence destruction or targeting of personnel? Go ahead and pop those answers in there if you, if you think you know. I'm, I'm curious to see your responses from the various audience we have. All right, a little bit, let's talk a little bit about hull area and complex areas. I, and I apologize if I'm talking too low or too, or too, or too high. I'm, I'm trying try to keep this mid-range for the audience and definitely in class or on, or on FOU. Okay? But we're talking about, like, here's your waterline area on the ship, okay, right up here. You can see my little cursor there. Okay, also on the bottom ship, these are the flat area, your hull areas, okay, your false kills, the keel, port and starboard. Then when I talk about complex areas, look at the bottom picture. What I'm talking about is basically your shaft, your screws, your rudders, your struts, your rope guards, both port and starboard. So when we do the search, you can do the, the long stretches with the sonar, and then when you get to the complex area, with a single turn of the knob, the, the, the video array Pro 4 can actually come down and continue the search, even with the hull crawler attached, and do these complex areas, and also do the piers, and also do the bottom. 
Okay, I'm going to show a quick video. This may take a second to load it. Let's see how this comes out. Okay? And again, I want you to orient yourself. Okay, here's the side of the ship, complex areas, and the bottom of the ship. Okay? So what you're seeing here is here's the water surface in the bottom of the ship, and we're running down the side of the hull. Here's some bubbles here. Okay, fish. Okay, and we came to the bow. Here's the bow of the ship. You can see that. And we're turning down. You see bubbles coming up from the bottom. There. ROV is going to turn. Okay. And as it turns, it's going to come back and head back to the aft of the ship. Right down here. We're going to head to that complex area I was talking about. Okay. And this, so basically, this is that flat part, that hull of the ship. Okay. See the keel? And what you're looking at, see these lines? That's actual weld marks. You have weld plates. You can see that with sonar. Look at the distances here. I mean, it's huge. This is out 21, 30 feet you're looking here, out in the distance. So with low vis, you can actually see these items. See the circular hull patch? See the welds, what it looks like? I've even seen it on dry docks where you can see a difference where it's sat, and the paint, you can see the paint difference on the hull of the ship. Welds, patches. See this right here? What is that? See this hard, shiny thing in the shadow? That's a transducer in this case, but if it was a parasitic device or a limpet, you can actually see it from a long ways away and you approach it. So that's what you're looking for while doing parasitic device or a limpet search. Okay, now that we've done the hull of the ship, let's take a step the next one, and then we finish that. And what we'll do is we'll actually go to the complex areas. You do your screw, shaft, and rudder. Now we're attached to the hull of the ship here. We're looking, we come down. With a turn of a knob, you can drop down off the hull, and now you're on the rudder. Okay, if you lose it, you can pick it back up with your sonar, get back into visual with your camera and your video, and you approach it. Now you can drop down, you can go to the side. In this case, they came, they found something immediately with a decent vis. You can see pad eyes. You can see the screw there in the distance. You see some ring life. But now all you do is continue the search. But that's how easy it is to come off the bottom of the ship, the hull, with a hull crawler, and come down and continue the search to mark areas. And you can hold that and respond it, or if you think it's time. You can respond to that immediately, or if you don't think it's time, you can continue the search and continue to mark the areas. All right, now what I'm going to do is talk about the video ray specific, the hull crawler and power crawler. There's the hull crawler with a single, single thumb screw attached. It's almost like a skateboard to roll down the hull of the ship. Easily deployed, lightweight, robust, allows for rapid deployment. I mean, as a, as a user, think about how and where you will deploy the ROV. Does the ROV need to be reconfigured to conduct a hull search? What does this entail? Think about what kind of power supply you need. Do you need a generator, 110, 220? you need oil and gas? Think about storage. Where are you going to keep this stuff in your vehicle? Can you fly with it? And transport configurations. I mean, what's the size and weight of the case of the ROV? What does it come in? Visualize it. Measure them. Look at your operations and think about the types of ops you'll be doing and how you'll be getting it. Here we are, you see the, the, the Pro 4 running down the side of the ship with a sonar. That shows you, you know, it, it attaches well at holding current on it to be able to hold that 90 degree angle. Here we're approaching some sea chest here with the camera, easing in. You can look up inside them. You can see the hinges on it right here. You can look at actually the bolts and stuff. You're looking for parasitic devices. You can see if it's been tampered with. Open recently. You get video. You can capture pictures. Uh, you can see, you know, anything that's been damaged. So like it's been, if the paint's broke, that'll give you suspicion that, hey, something's been tampered with. Or if the paint's intact, hey, it gives you warm fuzzies probably, unless the crew's involved, it's, it's probably good to go and it hasn't been messed with. Talk about video array ROV equipment specific to us for searching, some of those items we recommend. First of all is a second screen. Now, now, the reason we recommend that, that way when you're flying the sonar, your eyes can shift from the top screen to the bottom screen is an easily transition. Now there's a sonar that picks it up at a distance. As you get closer, you get within visual, and now you can come in and move it to the camera. You can capture your stills, get your video, or you can move on to the next item and back to sonar. Okay. I mentioned tether already. I'll cover that a little bit more in detail. But not only the length. I mean, it's ours is modular. It's plug and play. You can add or subtract emission to specifically. But also we have different types. You can have a negative that'll hold it down to the bottom. So you can work up to a ship so you're not afraid you'll knock limpets or items off the ship or get entangled. Or you can have a professional performance tether that's neutral, it's lightweight, it's easy, it's flyweight gear, weighs very, very little. Yeah. Or you can have a mixture of negative, you can have a mixture of neutral and the professional performance to meet your mission-specific needs. The inverter, I touched on that a little bit, but this is an 800-watt inverter right here. This will run the Pro 4. What does that mean to you? That means 
If you got a car battery, you can clip to alligator clip to or a boat battery. You don't need any gener cumbersome generators. You don't need oil and gas. Basically, if you're running on a boat, you'll run it as long as that boat's running. You know, with that boat battery, and you, you charge the battery. Okay, or even extra troll motor battery to have it in, have it quiet and smooth operations. The whole crawler, I talked about that. The um, the skateboard, as I, as you will, basically a thumb screw. It attaches it. It's it's simple, but hey, Kiss is a good project. Keep it simple, right? Uh, if it's simple, there's less things to go wrong. It's easy to use, less training on it. No cumbersome roll procedures or upside down or trying to maneuver through. You can basically fly down and do a rapid search of an area. The um, line cutter. Line cutter can be used to either cut something that's tied to the ship to remove it, uh, to free it, or you can cut fire and wires remotely if you choose to do so. The uh, video and camera to catch stills, to catch live video simultaneously. The uh, manipulator. Manipulator is used to deliver payloads or exploit sus suspect items. The uh, secondary camera to view into suctions and discharges, perpendicular areas, or even rear views of the ROV wherever you set it. Your sonar to increase your search rates and effectiveness during underwater operations and low visibility conditions. And this last one, uh, the sonar copilot by Seabite, is target tracking software. Okay, what that is. It, uh, if you look down here, see these boxes, what that is is automatic uh, target tracking software. So you can set your scale here, you slide it, and you can I'd say, I'm looking for items this size. And anything that falls within that size on the sonar, it'll box it. That way it'll help the human eye you know, bring it to it. And then if you see an item, you click on it, it'll turn green, and you can take a slider over here, and you can tell your ROV to either slide get closer or stay farther away and hold station, even in currents. So in other words, you can brief the team, you can hold it, and ROV will do the work and maintain that target in, in the software. Okay, Some uh, specific advantages to the video ROV and lipid parasitic device searches, a very, very small footprint. Uh, not only the ROV itself, but also, like I said, the power requirements. Rapid deployment, no cranes, no hydraulic lifts, no three, four men, you know, the lower over the side. Uh, so that expedites rapid deployment. Rapid search capability. I mentioned the hull crawl, but basically to fly down the hull and go at a rapid rate. You can cover a lot of area fast. Powerful, 21 pounds of thrust. That gives you over four knots, and it'll hold the hull in up to five knots in currents. Uh, ease of operation, no measuring or calibrating or cumbersome rollover attachment maneuvers while doing the search. So basically, you can do one side, you can move. Your vertical thruster drop down and do the other side of the ship and come back rapidly searching. You do the pier in the bottom or the bottom and harbor bottom as well. Sonar capable, plug and play. You want to add a sonar? All it is is wet mateable. You add it to it. If you want to take it off, take it off to, to help you do your your complex areas. Field serviceable. If it needs maintenance, I mean, if your cartridge seal is running low uh, on your thruster, all you do is a seven sixteenths inch wrench. You pop it off and you can replace the cartridge seal right there in the field or in the boat. Less than five minutes, you can do very easy on serviceability. Smooth transition from the hull to complex areas. So basically, you search the hull, and now you just turn. You can go down the screws. You can do port and starboard sides. You can do the rudder, drive down underneath, and come back on the other side. And so, as I mentioned, the sonar copilot by Seabite target tracking software. This is used the autonomy that, to be able to run it to help give aid to the human users to, to be able to hold station and help the, the human eye be brought to items on, on the, uh, within the sonar. Okay, Here's some of our basic configurations. The Pro 4 Plus base model it comes with a computer, integrated control box with Ethernet. What's that mean? In other words, you plug and play the sonar, it's ready to go. Uh, the additional screen to work for monitoring the sonar and the industrial hand controller. The rugged base model, it comes with a Cerakoted sub. What Cerakote is, if a lot of you that are shooters or use weapons, it's basically a hardened cover for the sub. If you're using acidic or high alkaline waters, it will help protect your sub and increase the life of it. Um, standard ICB and a tough book. A tough book it helps in wet or moist conditions or any of you coffee drinkers lean over your laptop on a continual basis to help protect your sub, your sub. We're also coming out with a splash proof, proof uh, ICB. If you need more information, we will be happy to send you that at a later date. Talking about accessories, Sonar Copilot, that's advanced sonar target tracking software, and Tether, which I've covered in detail before. And again, keep in mind, this is 
Taylor is uh, it's mission and platform specific. You know, where are you doing your operations? How are you working? Is it a boat? Is it a pier? Uh, are you, you know, traveling great distances? These are the things you need to think of as a user. Some other accessories we offer that are common are military basic operations accessory package. Now what this is is a kit that gives you a discount. And in it comes 40 meters of professional performance tether, 100 meters of neutral tether, extended tether deployment system, the stair code upgrade, a manipulator with both mounting kits, which is for your sonar or the basic sub, the hull crawler, the secondary auxiliary camera, the blue view V900 kilohertz, 130 degree field of view, multi-beam sonar with integration kit, then a LIN video enhancement. What LIN is, is uh, like if you're in murky water or to high turbidity or you know sunlight where you have glare, so actually with a click of a button you can adjust the screen so you can, you can see nomenclature or you can adjust it to get better pictures, cap capture better imagery and identify items in those, in those murky conditions. Uh, and a pro for maintenance kit to help you do maintenance in the field or if you're in austere environments or on deployment or out and away, you'll have a kit that's preset to help keep you running and keep you searchable. The, um, Copa, and another accessory I want to touch real quick. Now this, this is not for hull and limpet search, but when you do the bottoms and the piers and the cue routes, this is what's something you're going to be interested in. This is the uh, Copilot RI for reacquiring identifiers by C-Byte as well. It comes with the Blueview V900 130 degree field of view multi-beam imaging sonar, the Teledyne VVL Doppler velocity logging device, and a GPS. And uh, what I want to say is in next month's military webinar, when I do the underwater search of cue routes, docks, and vessels in commercial and military ports and waterways, I'll cover this in more detail about the Copilot RI requiring identified by CBI. The ROV, this ROV system will be capable, it will go to preset service and subservice target locations using coordinates. It can run preset search routes or go automatically to point and click locations in route. ROV pilots can autonomously follow predefined sorties or maintain a station in currents exceeding over a knot and in rough sea state conditions. If you want, look on your screen and you can register now for next month's webinar by simply replying yes to the poll on your desktop. I'll give you a second to find that. Poll is open. In summary, ROVs offer the users the opportunity to search and gather data quickly, safely, and effectively. They allow real-time data collection and information prior to the divers entering the water. They offer portability. They're lighter and faster to increase response times and the effective search radius of responders. In other words, you can throw it in a truck and go. You can actually throw it in a helicopter and, and deploy and get out somewhere. A quick note on that, I just came from a the South Korean ferry incident. And, uh, we were. I hit the ground in uh, in Incheon, and I was on the on the back. Of that, I was on that barge within four hours. I was a, a jet and a helicopter, and they dropped us down right on the right on the, right on the station with two video array pro fours and sonars. And also the um, flexibility to accomplish different types of searches, tasks, or inspections in stride and unseen. So what does that mean? Plug and play. You can add sonars. You can add the co-pilot. You can take things away. Get in smaller holes or cubbies. Add manipulators add line cutters all on station. It gives you a lot more capability and a lot of more versatility with your ROV. Okay? So incorporating ROV capabilities into existing limpet and parasitic device conops, some tactics, techniques, and procedures will help reduce tactical timelines. It will mitigate your current gaps and personnel shortages and give underwater hazardous device divers the ability to search ship hulls and ports much more quickly and safely in all water clarities while minimizing divers time on target and exposure to environmental hazards and keep them out of dangerous situations. All right, before I take your questions, let me introduce Ms. Kate McGeary, who has some questions for you. Go ahead, Kate. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Like Mark said, my name is Kate McGeary, and I am the marketing coordinator here at Video Ray. I just have a few questions I wanted to ask to get a better feel for who we have here this morning and uh, to get a gauge on everyone's interest in video Ray. Um, my first question is about any ROVs you may currently own. Um, you can uh, click as many as you want if you have multiple ROVs, or you can click no if you don't currently own an ROV.
Yeah. All right, I'm watching. Kate, you done? You done? No. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I'm just waiting for everyone to get their answers in before I move on. Okay. Um, my next question is um, about any uh, alternative funding. Do you need any assistance with grant documentation um, or sole source information? Um, if you want to go ahead and answer that one. Okay, and my last question is whether or not you'd like to be contacted by Video Ray about additional information about our ROVs. Um, Chris, yes or no? Okay, and with that, I will turn it back over to Mark. Um, go ahead, Mark. Okay, let me take a look at this. We've got a, uh, a couple questions here. One is, um, first I want to do a call out to Charlie Fall from Atlantis Marine. Hi, Charlie. That's a, it's not a question, but he did say hello. And uh, the next one is, uh, on average, how long does it take to inspect a ship hull from deployment to recovery? Ooh. I hate to be uh, evasive on this, but let me ask you this: How big is the ship? You know, you know what, what you know. What's your water conditions? You know, what, you know what uh, is it? A single screw? Is it a is it an aircraft carrier with you know with four screws and you know you know several thousand feet of hull? But you can see the complexity of that. And uh, I don't I I don't have an average for you. You know, are you, are you searching a boat? What is it? A patrol craft? I mean, that'd be relatively rapidly. You could probably do it in. I would say 20 minutes from splash to finish to get a comfortable size on a patrol craft, you know, like a like a 60 foot boat. You know, on an aircraft carrier, it's like, you know, it would probably take, I would say, upwards of maybe a couple hours, and that's because you're gonna have to shift stations, you're gonna have to move your, you know, your tether. But on the, what my counter is, how many ROVs are you using? Because if you're in a hurry, you can actually divide the ship up and use multiple ROVs to to do it more on a, more rapidly or quicker. Okay. And uh, I hope that answers your questions on the uh, how long it takes to inspect a ship from deployment to recovery. And the next question is, are there any neutralization options? Yes, there are. There's a, there's a couple of neutralizations. Not only are we working on some high-speed ones, which I can't stay online, uh, otherwise my proprietary uh, will kick off my NDA that I've signed. But uh, I will say that we work with some Sydney Alford tools on, on the uh, on a standoff, and, and on the slide that you saw earlier, the video with explosives, now if you put a standoff on, you can actually punch a hole in something or knock it off remotely and probably be able to video the whole thing. Uh, and also we have a, a deployment system. Basically it's like a mine neutralization system. It's beta, but if you're interested I can send you a video, and all we need from you is you tell us what size you want and how you want to initiate it, and we'll get more details on you and get back to you. Is that fair? And I hope that answers your questions. Um, are there any other questions? No? Okay. With that, I want to say, hey, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, and I'll, I'll look forward to hopefully hearing your questions at a later date or answer. Okay? Thank you very much. Good day.